Good afternoon, everyone. I am Chris Brubaker, Pastor Brubaker's oldest son. I would like to thank all of you very much for planning this special day for my dad. I can't think of a more deserving person for a celebration of this kind. I would also like to apologize for not being there in person. At this moment, I am preparing to move my wife and three children from Iowa to Nebraska. And when I told my father of this conflict, as always, both he and my mom were very understanding and supported my decision to stay behind and work on the move. It was very important for me to be there, but since I am not, I would like to share with you this video to show you my love and support. I have known the Reverend James A. Brubaker for over 36 years. I have and will always have the privilege of calling him my dad. You have had all the chance to get to know him over the years. I have had my entire life to learn from him and look up to him as my hero. I have never known another person in my life that is more giving than my father, as he is always doing something for someone else. It wasn't until I was a young adult that I recognized all the sacrifices that he made for me, my siblings, and my mom. And speaking of my mom, both he and my dad, she and my dad make up the best set of parents a kid could have. I'm very blessed to have them in my life, and I thank them very much for the sacrifices they made for us. One of the most amazing things about my father is that he's a great family man. His family has always been a priority, even amongst his busy commitments as a pastor. The only thing that ever came before his family is our Lord, and we can all understand that. My dad is the epitome of a servant as he closes out his amazing career as a pastor. I know that he will continue to look for opportunities to get behind the pulpit and share God's love. At this time, I'd like to share with you two quick stories that are about my father that I hope that you will enjoy. The first one has to deal with how he can deal with difficult situations. A uh, number of years ago when we were kids in Gig Harbor, Washington, we had a very unique snowy December morning. And first, rather than canceling church, which my dad would never have done, he made it to church and he served as a dual role, both pastor and pianist, for this particular Sunday because of the limited attendance. And he wanted to make sure that there was a service for anybody that showed up. So when it came time to do a hymn, he asked for volunteers to provide their favorite hymn so that he could do it just kind of impromptu. And I raised my hand and wanted to offer up my favorite hymn. My favorite hymn, of course, being the 30-some verse hymn that would have taken him forever to play for the congregation. And so I made that suggestion. He took it, and as he was paging through the hymn, hymnal to pick that hymn up, he recognized in a flash what I was doing to him and kind of put him putting the heat on my dad to play a, a long hymn. So he gazed down at the hymn and up above to his eyes and looked at me and said, Thank you, Chris, for the suggestion. We will continue our service now with singing hymn 112, verses 1 and 2 only. And kind of brought it right back around and showed how he could handle that in that moment. So that was funny to me. Uh, the second one, the second story, doesn't even involve my dad directly. It involves me in Sunday school and junior high learning from our Sunday school teacher, Ron Everson. He was giving his lesson that particular Sunday, teaching us about God, and I was uh, distracting the rest of the class with a sidebar conversation. Ron Everson, as he should have, called me out and asked me to quit being a distraction. But in that moment, a friend of mine, Andy Bond, told Ron Everson that he had no business telling me to stop talking, and that since I was the pastor's son, I did not need to listen to the lesson, because I was already going to heaven no matter what. And I thought that was kind of funny that the influence of being a pastor's son on the kids thinking that I had it pretty easy being a pastor's son and I didn't need to pay attention in Sunday school. So I thought that was kind of funny. Hope you enjoyed that. Uh, and there are literally dozens of other stories that I could share with you, but I know I need to make this brief. I love you so much, Dad, and you make me very proud as you retire from an amazing ministry. It gives me great pleasure to wish you congratulations on an amazing career. I appreciate everything that you have done for me and everyone else over the years. And I pray that God will continue to use you while you are enjoying retirement. I know God because of you, Dad. So I thank you for that relationship and for the fact that you have given me life now in two different ways. Thank you. On behalf of my wonderful mom, Lois, my amazing siblings, Tim, John, and Becky, my beautiful wife, Katie, and my amazing children, Lorelai, Amelia, and Hudson, we love you. Congratulations.